Welcome back to the Don't Stop Me Now podcast. I am your HIV positive host, Miss Jennifer Lee Vaughn. How is everybody out there doing? I'm checking in a little sooner than normal. I normally um, wait about, I don't know, I end up giving it like two or three weeks, but I just felt inspired because I've had so many people reaching out telling me that they're loving my podcast. That makes me feel so good. And I'm like, okay, I'm doing something right. So it makes me feel like inspired to come into my closet and chit chat for a while. Um, So I do want to start off by doing some shout outs because these are always fun. Um, Lorena is my first one that I have listed. And I don't know where your name came from. Sometimes they come from YouTube comments. And then sometimes people will write to me through my IG account. I don't have any other way for people to really reach me from the podcast. And it's I was talking to Lindsay Williams, who is podcasting herself. She follows me on Instagram. And I follow her. I believe I do. Oh my God, if I don't, I should be. Um, and she's doing Busy Mom's Fitness Corner. She goes by Lushy Williams on um, Instagram. But I think if you look up Busy Mom's Fitness Corner, you will find her um, for her podcast. And she asked me about podcasting, not even, I don't know, I feel like it was three or four months ago. And she already has like 37 episodes. Like, what the fuck? I have, this is my 59th and I've been doing this for almost two years. Clearly, I am not on the same track as her, but she's really motivated and she's just having a great time. And um, I've actually been bouncing some like ideas off her or asking her some questions about like different things with regards to podcasting, but um, check her out. I will um, warn you, she's Irish and she's got the most amazing, if I got that wrong, I'm going to kill myself, but I'm pretty sure, no, maybe you're English. Oh my God. I'm so sorry, Lindsay. I, I get them confused. Honestly, I used to know those accents really well and I could distinguish between the two. And now I'm not sure because there's a part of England that's really has like an insanely strong accent. It's Glasgow. And they had some kids from MTV, like, you know, on the challenge on and I I fucking love it because I don't know what they're saying. They're speaking English, but their accents are so strong that I can't really understand. So I get confused between their accent and Ireland. I know they're different. I, I apologize. Regardless, what I'm trying to say is that Lindsay has a very strong accent, which is fun because you have to really listen a little bit to try to figure things out. And it's just fun. It's fun to hear how our same words are pronounced so completely differently. I can't remember. She said something. Uh, I can't remember. I need to write this shit down. But she said something to me and I, boy, did I think she said, I thought she said something completely different. Oh, island. I thought she was saying island. Oh, no, that was it. She was saying, (laughs) that was it. She was saying Ireland. And I thought she was saying island that's not that big of a difference, but it seemed like it when she left me the voice message. Anyways, shout out to Lindsay and her podcast. Okay. Of course, always Misty Diane, who's been a long, I was going to say a (laughs) long-term supporter. That long-term survivor is an HIV term. Um, Long-term or long, God, Jesus Christ, Jennifer, get it together. She's been a supporter of mine for a long time. Okay. uh, Kita Warrior. I kind of glossed over your name last time, last time, but she's just awesome and really supports me in so many ways through um, messaging with regards to HIV stuff and just my personal life. Because, you know, I'm always on the struggle bus when it comes to um, dating and my close friends. (laughs) They help me. They are my therapy, really. They do. They help me get through this shit, this goddamn Tinder dating, um, which I've now decided that, like, I came up with three things. I told my mom, I said, this is it, mom. So these are my choices. I either do nothing, which I'm not going to do, like, as far as dating. Like, I can either just not date people or... I'm kind of in particular talking about this person that I, of course, the one that I really like. Um, I could just not see him again, right? I could stop the torture. Um, Or, like, really, realistically, could this be a relationship? Let's think about this. He's 31 and 51. He has his whole group of friends that are his age. Mm, Yeah, I'm living a totally different life. I have kids. He has no kids. It's embarrassing, honestly, when he asked me last time how my kids were. I'm like, let's just pretend I don't have kids. Can we just, like, when I'm over here, let's, I'm just Jennifer. I'm not a mom. Like, I don't want that thought in his head that I'm a mommy. It's just weird. Um, But anyways, like, yeah, our lives are super, super different. So, like, realistically, when I think about, 
I don't know. I mean, I've never had really a daily back and forth with him. I don't even know what it would be like. But the thought of that all of a sudden, like, instantly gives me this little feeling of anxiety. Like when I just said the daily back and forth, I got instant anxiety because I don't want to be on a leash with anybody. I like really don't. Like it really freaks me out. But I want to be in love at the same time. What the fuck is wrong with me? Like I want all of those love feelings because I feel that when I'm with them or it's lust. People have told me it's just lust, but I don't really know the difference. I don't, but I think it, I guess it's lust because I don't know him that well for it to be love, but it's been three months of this seeing each other. You know, it's not consistently, it's like every two weeks, but when we're together, it feels super intimate and special. So it really, it really fucks my head up. Um, but anyways, so the relationship thing, I don't think I want that. I don't, I like, I, can I imagine, like I've said this before, can I imagine like, going and hanging out with him somewhere. It would all like so much of my life would get in the way. So much of his life would get in the way. Then there'd be like, you know, irritation and frustration. And then there you go. It's all that relationship shit. I don't want to deal with. Like I really don't. But when I'm with him, I want to like eat him up. I want to tell him, I just, oh my God, I, I'm like crazy about you. Like you're so fucking beautiful. Like I, I just can't stop thinking about you. And then I just want to melt into him and, you know, say all those things and feel all those feelings. But I don't, I don't know. I don't want all the stuff that comes with a relationship at all. So those are my, there's three options, not do anything, have a relationship or just live in this torturous state. So I'm choosing the torture. Like it's the best option. Honestly, I just told my mom, I said, I'm just, it's worth it for, as Kita said, I think somebody said, maybe it was Kita. It's like 30 min minutes of pleasure for literally like two weeks of torture and misery, which is super true. I don't think he's having a hard time at all. It is just me. I think I am alone in this. And so that's why I continue to date on Tinder because I need to get my mind off the boy. And you know what it is? It's that he's not available. That's it. It's because there was another girl that he had feelings for. He is putting up barriers and walls. Like he's doing everything perfectly to make me want him super bad. I mean, if he was like at my doorstep, I wouldn't be interested. Like I would super be turned off. Super be? <laughs> I would totally be turned off. I really would. Uh, by the way, I said um, on my last podcast, pot podcast, I said, um, the rose is off the bloom. Uh, hello, the bloom is off the rose. I just wanted to, I'm going to check that off my list of things because that really bothered me that I said that wrong, not once, but twice. The bloom is off the rose. I don't even know what I, that was in reference to. I wrote notes here. I had like three, like I have notes going all over my house. Like there's, every time I think of something that I want to say on my podcast, I write something down and I swear I had a third piece of paper somewhere with stuff on it. I can't find it anywhere. And then one of my notes here says dryer tip. I I have no clue. I sat here for like five minutes going, what, what did I mean by that? Dryer tip. I just bought a new dryer. It was just installed, but I don't, I don't like, I cannot think of one thing that I wanted to tell you guys about the dryer. Oh, I just, I just remembered. Okay. It wasn't a tip of, oh my God, I'm so stupid. It wasn't a I literally, this just happened like an hour and a half ago. And I'm like, why did I write dryer tip? Okay. It had nothing to do with Q-tips. It had nothing to do with giving you guys good advice. It had to do <laughs> with the fact that the guys who came in with my dryer and my, my laundry room is upstairs. So that really has nothing to do with this, but they're taking it up and they tell me that when they're taking the other one down, that they're looking at the connection and there is apparently corrosion on the gas, whatever, something that sticks out of the wall. Oh, fuck, I don't know. And I said, oh, is that why the dryer stopped working? And he goes, probably not. Probably has nothing to do with that. I'm like, okay, because yeah, my dryer is 18 years old. It's like really way past its like lifetime. So I said, um... I said, oh, well, I thought I bought like the parts. And he goes, oh yeah, you did. You purchased the parts that come with the dryer. Apparently there's a good, you have to buy these X, there's all these add-ons when you buy an appliance. So there were extra parts that I had to buy. It was like, I don't remember, 60 bucks or something, plus 40 bucks to take my other one away. It was, let me tell you, it was like a $700 dryer. And I ended up paying almost a thousand with like all the other shit. I don't know. It was over 900 for sure. 
or maybe it was just close to 900. Maybe it was eight something, but whatever. It, there was a lot of extra stuff. So I say to him, I'm like, oh, here we go. They're going to nickel and dime me again. I said, so do I have um, to pay for this? Is it? And he goes, no, we probably have one in the truck. And I'm thinking, I mean, he really made it seem like it was no big deal. But then he said, but you can tip us if you want. What? This is Home Depot. I don't think they're allowed to do that. I really don't. I'm pretty sure they're not because I had a refrigerator brought one time from Home Depot and I could have sworn that the people at Home Depot when I ordered it, by the way, I ordered this dryer online alone, did not go to Home Depot. Oh, I did go to Home Depot, but nobody was helping me. I was like there for like five minutes and like nobody was helping me. So I said, fuck it. God, I'm swearing a lot. I, I'm going to go home and I'm just going to do it online. And I found the same one online, the same price. I just did everything online. It was easy. But I do remember when I got my refrigerator that they told me, I think they told me you can't, you don't tip the, <laughs> you don't tip the people that are bringing it in. And I do remember them saying like, if there's any scratches on it, refuse it. Don't even let it come in the house. Just refuse it, send it back. And then that's the only way. Cause they deal with another company, I think for, well, for the refrigerator they did. Anyways, I don't think that was on the up and up, but because these three guys were so nice, I'm like, well, who cares? You know, sometimes you want to tip like the people at the grocery store and you're not allowed to. Sometimes you want to tip the people at McDonald's and you're not allowed to. Maybe I'm not supposed to tip these guys. I didn't even, all I had was 10 bucks in my purse. So I, I tipped him $10 when he left. I guess my whole point was, is that I don't think I was supposed to do that. I don't think I was obligated to do that, but I did it anyways. God, dryer tip. I need to add more like detail to my notes. So I know what the hell, I mean, at least literally like I wrote that like a half an hour ago, hour and a half ago or whatever. And I couldn't remember what the hell I wrote that down for. Okay. So back to my, um, my list, uh, Kita warrior, Patty. Um, she's also on my close friends, of course, Brooke. Hello, Brooke. Um, and I, I talked about her, um, last time and her boyfriend, Jacob, who's, um, an actor, a pretty well-known freaking actor in Hollywood. And Brooke's just the sweetest. And I just, I just, I adore her. Um, not I adore her. I adore her. I'm not editing any of this. So if I mess words up, I'm just going to fix them right after. And you're just going to have to deal with my mess up. Okay. And then I said Chanta star last time because that's her Instagram, but her name is Chantel. So hi Chantel. Sherry G wrote me a nice note. Thank you so much. Rachel Gibson wrote me a note on YouTube and said, best podcast, love your Tinder stories. Thank you so much, Rachel. And that gives me a lot of motivation to go on dates. And I do think that there are two coming up in the next few days. I've got two boys on the hook, I should say. Um, one's in Carmel. He's 30. I think he's 33. Brandon. And um, he is five. Well, they're close to my height, both of them. No, no, no. He was 6'2". Ooh, he was 6'2". Very outdoorsy looking, the bearded thing, the brown kind of curly hair. He's got some model type pictures. We found each other on Facebook dating. He told me last night that I am the only one he's chatting with. And he's like, he says he has like primal instincts, like to want to just tear my clothes off, which is great. I mean, that's awesome. Neither, neither, either of these guys know about my HIV diagnosis, which of course won't affect them, but it's just, of course, you have to say something. And the more educated the boy is, or where he's from, like Carmel, I don't know, there is something to this. I will not hold that information back. Like, you know, I won't have sex with them first and then say it after, which I have done to people that I didn't think would really like, what are they going to, the people that I've done that to are like harmless. Like they're not going to get a lawyer and go, how dare you? So I have done that in the past because I know there's no risk and it's like, oh God, I just, you know, yeah. Then they, they already know what they're going to get. And then they just, they just have to wrap their brain around it. And like I've said a million times, like once somebody meets me or <laughs> have sex with me, they've been fine with it. But these two guys, um, the other one is over in San Jose uh, and his name's Josh, Joshua. He's 31. I don't know why I keep the guys I find are all about 31, 32 or 33. That's about it. Um, and same kind of build. Like they're both like, look like they're into hiking. All, like every guy's into hiking and freaking motorcycles and fishing. <laughs> Those seem to be like a constant, but anyways, Joshua and I are connected now through, um, in, no, no, Snapchat. He just sent me a snap. I'm not going to open it yet. Um, and Brandon and I are talking through my phone. This is all, this all started yesterday. Today is Wednesday. 
Brandon wants, no, Joshua San Jose wants to see me this weekend, want, you know, just to get a drink. I'm kind of waiting for Brandon to ask me. We're, he and I are only 30. Well, we're both, I'm kind of 30 minutes from either of them. So I will be letting you guys know how these dates go. Um, it was weird. I had somebody last week um, who was definitely like, he's, he was a baller. He was like a shorter guy, compact. I think he was like five, seven, five, eight, but really muscular tattoos, killer body. He sent me pictures of himself. Um, I don't know that I was all into his face. Honestly, he was a little, I don't know how to describe him. He had short, like his hair was short. I feel like he had like platinum blonde hair, which I'm not into that at all. And his face was like angular, like a nice jaw and stuff. But I feel like his eyes were too deep set. Like they were like a little dark um, around his eyes. So like the face I wasn't totally into, but I could get past that if he's got like a killer body. Anyways, we exchange phone numbers and he sends me like all these pictures, even one of him getting a blowjob. Like I didn't really need that. Like the girl's pretty and like, dude, why do you send me that? Like, I don't, I don't want to see that. Like whatever. Great. I see that you can have sex super. So can I, but anyways, um, I send him one back and it was a half, um, like, I don't know, like half, I don't know. I never know who's listening to this, so I don't want to be too graphic, but I was showing part of my uh, upper body, um, and my stomach. And like, I think I was, you know, in underwear, panties, panties, and it was a bathroom shot. So we had basically said, we'd gone back and forth, back and forth. So I sent him this picture and I said something like, we should meet up sooner, something like that ghost me. Nothing after that. Nothing. He's like gone. So I, I'm thinking, okay, I'm getting, giving him the benefit of the doubt. And I wait until the next day. I don't ask any more questions because I don't know. I mean, maybe he has a girlfriend. Uh, maybe he, um, there's, you know, who knows? Maybe he's in jail. Maybe he died. I don't know, but he didn't write anything back. So um, I unmatched him the next day. And I really do feel like somehow he found out my, found out about my HIV status through my phone number. My girlfriend says it's super easy to do, but when I Google my phone number, I find my address. I find my ex-husband's last name. I find my, <clears throat> excuse me, my first and last name when I was married to my ex-husband, but I don't see Jennifer Vaughn anywhere unless you're paying for a service where you're putting in a phone number and they give you more information. So that's, I don't, that's all I can think of is that he found out my HIV status, doesn't know anything about like being undetectable or whatever, and just, you know, didn't say a thing back, but it kind of hurt my feelings. Like, dude, I sent you like a half nudie and you like didn't say anything. It made me feel like shit. Hold on. Let's see who's texting. It's my daughter. Oh my God. My Ryan cut her bang. She, she cut bangs and she's now she's not happy about it. Oh, she says the bangs look fucked in person, but I fixed them a little. I think they're really pretty and I think she looks really pretty. Um, I'm going to just tell her really quick. Hold on. Ryan, I think they look super pretty and that picture is gorgeous. Can I use it on my Instagram story? I know you're going to say no, but you look really, really pretty there. Love you. I'm doing a podcast right now. Love you. Um, okay. So I could never do that. Like I, once I grew out my bangs, I've never cut them since they've always been long. I just, but both my daughters kind of experiment with just cutting their hair out of freaking nowhere, like just cutting bangs or chopping off all their hair. I'm like, why do you guys do that? It's like unsettling, even it's unsettling for me. Um, okay. So Tinder dates, I will keep you guys updated on all that. I think I covered everything just there. Um, I did my shout outs. Um, I thought it was funny and I wanted to point this out that, you know, when you see people podcasting, they always have headphones on. Well, I don't really know what that's all about. Cause like, I just am in my closet talking. I don't need headphones to hear myself talk. I think I've talked about this before. I mean, it's, I can use them if I was going to go back and edit and then I want to hear better and there's other people talking in the room or something. And I just need it to be more like focused in my ear so I can hear, but I, I still don't understand I don't get it. Like, why are people wearing headphones unless they are in a studio and there's like a glass wall or I don't know. I, I Somebody tell me because I really don't get it. Like, I've got these nice headphones, but I don't wear them and they hurt my freaking ears anyways because my ears stick out and then I put them on and they push my ears back. And then after like a while, my ears get sore. 
Oh, she wrote, thank you in big letters. I genuinely do hate them in person, but it's fine. Laugh out loud and sure, hee hee, I'm going to post it on my Instagram tonight. That's like surprising because Ryan usually doesn't um, let me post pictures of her. She's very, very particular. She's very hard on, hard on herself. I don't know why because the girl's gorgeous. Oh, um, my God. And I always say, Ryan, did you see what I look like in high school? Like, And she's like, oh, my God, you can't compare me to yourself. I don't know why you say that because you were so pretty. I wasn't so pretty. I was like average, like super, super average. And I, I know I said in my last podcast that I was a nerd. I don't know that I was a nerd. I think I was shy. Um, I wasn't an ugly kid. I definitely went through like a weird stage where I looked like a tomboy, like, cause my hair was short. And I think, yeah, kids would ask me if I was a boy, um, which really made me feel bad at the time when I was probably like eight or nine, but I kept my hair short through like fifth grade, I think. Yeah. And then it was just kind of a little bit longer and I'd try to feather it, but my hair was curly. I had a hard time. Let me tell you, having curly hair and not knowing how to handle it when you're growing up is like really, it, it affects your self-esteem so much when you see kids with, you know, girls with super long straight hair and you're just like, you've got this bush on your head that you like literally you have no clue what to do with. And I, I don't know if I've said this before, but I would be like at a slumber party. I'd be the only one that looks super different in the morning because my hair would be all over the place and I would just be mortified and I'd want to leave really early because I didn't want people looking at my hair, you know, and you can't flatten it down. It just sticks up. Hold on. Yep. I'm doing a podcast. Yeah. Did you need something? Are you serious? Oh, okay. All right. I'll have to like stop this and then come back. I have to take my son to practice. I didn't realize what time it was. Okay. Um, speaking of my son, he just had his physical um, for sports. He's He turned 15 May 1st. And yes, he's of course, he's a very tall boy. We've known for a long time that he was going to be a tall boy just because you can do that height thing when they're like two with the parents height and weight and his height and weight at the time. And it, you know, some, it, it estimated that he'd be somewhere around six, eight to like possibly even seven feet tall. Like what the fuck? I hope that doesn't happen. That's really, it's like crazy tall. But anyways, uh, it is exciting to see him growing um, because, yeah, I mean, I look I look up at him now. He is actually, um, we had him measured. I filmed it on my Instagram story because I, I had a feeling he had hit this number, and but we weren't sure yet. And, yes, he's officially 6'5 at 15 years old. So all of us look up at him now, including his dad, which is just super cute. It's like the baby. The baby of the family is taller than everybody in the family now. He is the tallest one in the entire family. Although my ex-husband has some cousins who played professional football. And I think they were like, um, like they played, one of them played for the Colts. And uh, they're like, they're farmers out in the valley. And they they do like uh, dairy farming and stuff like that. So, so um, Dutch of them. And yeah, they're all Dutch. Warmer Dam is the last name. But um, Vanderpool is my ex-husband's. Uh, cousin's last name. And anyways, those guys are like, f I think they're like 6'10". So Owen's not as tall as them, but in our immediate family around here, Owen's taller than everybody. And it's, just, it's so freaking cute because he's still a baby. You know, he's only 15. And yeah, so he's definitely, I mean, he just turned 15 in May. So like, it's going to keep going. So I predict 6'8". That's my prediction. We should all make predictions in the family and like put it somewhere and like, you know, seal it up and we'll see what ends up happening. So, um, Okay. Well, I have like 20 minutes. So I'm thinking, what do I want to really get into um, before I have to go? Oh, I was, this is so crazy. I, I mean, it's an, it isn't, it isn't. I got, I get this like report from Apple on where I rank in different countries. I'm not even ranked anywhere in the U S and most of my followers or listeners are in the U S but I was ranked number two in Macedonia for self-improvement. I'm like, where the I'm oh, not going to swear. I'm like, where is Macedonia? Like, I think it's in Europe. And I asked my daughter, she goes, I think it's in Africa. So I look it up. It's in, it's in Greece. And I'm like, I'm number two there. And then I, I go to my pod bean analytics and I'm going over the map. You can just kind of scroll over the map and it shows it. There's, you know, who listens. There's, a, <laughs> there's one listener in Macedonia. So I don't know. Somehow that made me number two on their podcast chart. Um, but I, Hey, I'm proud of it. I'll take it. <laughs> That's kind of, kind of exciting regardless. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> I will say, okay, I'm going to talk about Puerto Rico, the USC H a, which I had told you guys about, um, last week that I had been accepted as a social scholar 
And I had a lot of people that I know that are going that I really would like to see. And um, but the more I thought about it, the more I was like, um, I realized that we have to do I, the requirements are a little insane. Like they, there's uh, coming up to the meeting, which is in October. There's biweekly zooms like that alone to me is too much. Like I'm I feel like I need to be paid for this. And I'm not there's n- there, there's no pay. They pay for you to go there. You know, air they pay for your airfare, your hotel and the ticket in. So it's a free trip there, but you're working and then you're, you're working before the trip, you're working while you're there, and then you're committed to doing this, like I guess through your social media, to continue to promote this campaign that you're supposed to create um, through December. And I'm like, and I'm not getting paid for this. And so I'm like, this is crazy. I'm not doing this. So I, I know that those people wanted to see me, but honestly, like, they're not going to be there to hold my hand when I run into people that don't want to see me and I feel awkward and I don't want to deal with any of that. I'm just like, I don't feel that connected to the community in many ways. And I've been there, done that. I've already done the conferences. I don't need to do it again. It doesn't do anything for my advocacy. And I don't think that there's much new stuff out there, honestly, with regards to HIV. I mean, we just had the conference in Montreal. I didn't go to it, but like people were writing that nothing really has changed. There's not really anything new to report. So I don't think I'm missing out on anything. And then I leave my house and I worry about my freaking animals. I can't even go to sleep for eight hours to not wake up to my kitchen kind of being a mess and my refrigerator is like out of sorts just because of the way my kids do things. And I just, I, I get anxiety about leaving. I don't know how I went to Montreal as many times as I did to go see Eric because I, it really like, I mean, I'm not even kidding. One time I left and I put, I put a giant blanket in the kitchen on the floor so that if they drop anything on the floor, it'll just go on that because I know that if they drop it on the floor and anything, you know, crumbs or wet or whatever, it won't be cleaned up right and there will be ants. So I thought if I put a blanket, like what was I thinking? I put a blanket on the floor in the kitchen, in the kitchen. And when I got home, it was gone. And Joey was like, mom, that was like weird. Or Ryan said that was weird. So they, they like removed it almost immediately. But that's like, I don't want, and I've always said, I'm going to get a cleaning lady that's going to show up the day before I come home so I don't have to come home to a big mess. My kids just aren't like me when it comes to how I like my house. And so I just get too much anxiety about leaving them. I I really have a whole routine with my animals like all throughout the day and I worry about them and I just, I can't do it. It's just too hard to be away. So I wrote to the guy who wrote to, I'm not going to say names, but anyways, there was one specific person with the campaign or whatever the you know, who let me know that I got picked. And he's, he, I wrote to him directly. I just responded back to that email and I kept it really short and sweet and said, hi, said his name. And I said, look, I've given this some thought. And unfortunately with more thought behind this, I'm going to have to withdraw myself from the um, scholarship. And I just wanted to give you this information so that you could offer it to somebody else. And I really thank you for considering me and giving me this opportunity. And, um, I just wanted to thank you guys again, but I'm going to, you know, step aside and let you give this to somebody else. Thank you so much for the, for the opportunity. And that was yesterday morning. Nothing, nothing. I feel like they're mad at me. Like they didn't, he didn't say anything back. And today there's supposed to be a zoom that I should have attended, which obviously I'm not. Um, and they'll see I'm not there, but I'm assuming like they got the message. I mean, I'm supposed to be contacting them to set up airfare and stuff like that. So I guess that's it. They got the message, but I think that's really unprofessional to not write back and say, we understand. Thank you for letting us know. It's, you know, too bad that you can't do it. We were looking forward to working with you. I mean, that would be the right thing to say, but I have received nothing back. I I just think it's weird. Like, are you butthurt? Like, what the, it's just weird. Like you do realize like you guys are offering, if anybody's listening from there, like you're expecting so much from somebody with no pay. Like it's crazy. I'm done doing all of this stuff for free. I'm just done. So, and I know a lot of advocates feel that way. So I'm kind of like it, I don't feel bad about it because 
I, I know I'm right in this way that we should be getting paid for this. And I know they think like them offering the trip is enough, but it's not because I mean, I'm working the entire time I'm there having to interview people like deal with my social media, edit shit, you know, I don't, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm good. So anyways, that's over and done with. I don't need to worry about it anymore. Um, and then I really want to talk about the Backstreet Boys because I went to the concert and it was really good. Um, but I want to talk about, um, last night on TikTok. And what I want to talk about on the Backstreet Boys is Brian Luttrell specifically. And if you know the Backstreet Boys, you'll know why I'm bringing his name up. Um, But I last night during a TikTok live, first of all, I did a TikTok live Monday night. In three and a half hours, I had almost 90,000 viewers. 90,000 insane. So that means that while I'm on for typically the number is around a thousand that were following me or watching me all, you know, continuously. Sometimes it went up to 1,800. Sometimes it went down a little bit to like 800. But over three and a half hours, I reached 90,000 people, whether they all heard about you equals you probably not. Um, Because a lot of the times I'm answering questions just, you know, about HIV and my story and stuff. But I do try to say everything I try to repeat you equals you as often as possible that I can't transmit it. How powerful is that to have that um, platform to talk about HIV stigma and you equals you. It's amazing. It's amazing. I will tell you that when I go on Instagram live and I have 10,000 followers on there, I get maybe 10 people, 10. That's it. TikTok is a whole nother animal. And I don't know what it is. If they put me like on a for you live page or something. Um, I did do a different background this time where I had like, I made a green screen behind me that basically answers like so many questions that says, yes, I'm HIV positive. No, I don't feel sick. My medication is free. I take one pill a day. Like I put all of these things that sit behind me and, you know, and I also put my sick picture next to my face. So that's always present right there. They can see my super sick picture. So it catches people's attention. And I think that's why I got so many viewers that night. And I was stoked. I mean, I got in the three and a half hours, I got 1400 new followers. I mean, I I mean, I'm telling you, I went two months straight without getting new followers nothing on TikTok. It was crickets because I wasn't doing lives and I wasn't doing that green screen. And I think that really helped a big, a lot. I, it's the sick picture. I know that drew people in and people wanted to know what the hell was going on with me being, you know, having that sick picture ne- next to me. Um, but anyways, it made me really motivated to do another one. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to do one, um, last night. So I get on, I'm on for about 10 minutes and I, I'm checking, the views. I just kind of have to swipe the screen over while I'm on a live and I see I've already 10,000 already. 10,000 people in 10 minutes had already checked into my story or watched me live. Like I can't even wrap my brain around that. It's like, whoa, I even got, I think I messed up a little bit. I was, I think I was worn out from the night before and all the talking I did. And then I realized I'm going to repeat like so many things that I said the night before. And then I always worry that people that are on the new live who were on the one from the night before, like, God damn, she just repeats herself over and over again. But I do because I never know who's new and, you know, who hasn't heard what. So I got a little like nervous and then I see the number is really high and I'm like, oh my God, there's so many freaking people watching. And then poof, out of nowhere, I get, it stopped. I got a black screen with a warning that says your count has been banned and it's going to be deleted by September 12th. If you don't, this is so ridiculous. It had to do with age verification. It said that I was under, you know, are you under 13 years old? Okay. Duh. Uh, No. First of all, do I look like I'm under 13 for one thing? So someone must have reported that I was a minor, which is just so dumb because I, I think when I made my TikTok account, I had to verify that I was who I was. And I had to, I, I'm almost positive. I know they have my driver's license for something because I do get a little bit of income from TikTok. It's very little, um, but I had to report it in my taxes. So like they have my information, but they stopped it. I can't even, my account, if you look it up at the this moment right now, it's a black screen and it says uh, account banned. It shows how many people are following me. It shows that I have like 2.1 million likes shows how many people I follow, but the screen is black. All my videos, it doesn't show my videos. And it says you have until September 2nd to appeal this or, um, and also if you want to get your data, you can uh, ask for that as well. 
I mean, this just, they don't even give you a freaking heads up. It just went completely black. I mean, I was like, what just, what just happened? Like out of nowhere, I'm in the middle of talking and it's gone. My account is gone. As a creator and all of the work that I put into TikTok for over two years now, this is, it's such a shock to your system. You don't even know what to do because there's no one to call. You don't know if all this work that you've done and the time that you've put in to build this um, following is for nothing. Did you just, it's like someone just went into your bank and took all your money. It's, it's such a f bad feeling. And so with TikTok, they really, they do not support the creators. We are the bad guy. We're guilty until we can prove that we're innocent is what happens all the time. So it probably took one asshole to send them a message and say that I was a minor and it's causing me uh, well, total anxiety and also a big ass hassle to try to prove to TikTok that I am who I am. And TikTok doesn't answer right away. So my son looks up how to get a hold of them. He gets an email because when I go into their way of telling me how to do it, when I hit appeal, it gives me a list of ways to get into my account. Like you can use your phone number, you can use Facebook, Google, you know, it gives you that list. Like how do you want to try to enter your account? So I give them my, my um, phone number and I go in that way, but it's not sending me to anywhere where I can appeal it. It doesn't say anything. So uh, Owen gives me an address. He looks it up on his phone right away. He says, you can do legal TikTok or something like that at legal. I don't remember what it was, but I, so I send them an e email help, you know, Jesus, like I'm like trying to get some kind of information and they do write back with a general message that they send people when they understand that something has happened on the creator end. And I, the first one says, you know, if you need to do age verification, click this link. So I went through and answered all the questions. I sent a picture of my driver's license and I sent a screenshot of the error that was sent to me saying that my account had been banned and I sent it and I, and then I put it out on all my social media, like, Hey, this happened, you know, what the fuck? And so, um, people are writing to me saying they know this is happening to a lot of people. Um, a lot of people say, just appeal it. You'll get it back. Some people say that this happened to them. They never got it back and they had to start over from scratch. Like, what? Like, really? I mean, I can't even believe that this is a thing. I know they're owned by the Chinese. My mom says, you know, they're communists. They can do whatever they want. They have all your information. I'm like, mom, everybody has my information. Like, I am not a secret. Like, whatever. I mean, I feel like I don't even need to cover my computer screen little tab because I feel like anybody and everybody knows uh, pretty much all my business. So it doesn't really matter. But yeah, it's a bad feeling. I mean, part of it is a, it's a weird thing. Part of it is a relief because I always feel this kind of pressure to need to do more TikToks and I'm not really on top of it that much, but it is a source of information on there with regards to HIV, which is really important. And, um, my, you know, my top three videos are pinned, which are really informative. And you know, what's ironic is I recently deleted a bunch of my TikToks off my phone because I needed room on my phone. So I'm really hoping they can send me all of my videos back. So if they do, which really sucks, because that one, that one that says, um, I don't know who needs to hear this, but I have HIV. And I can't remember what else I say, but it's like that one has like, I don't know, like, 4 million views or something. I still to this day, it was like, I did it in November. Still to this day, I get likes on that video. So that's still going around. And it's a one that's real. It gives a lowdown of what HIV is today. And it's a really important video. And it's to like Olivia, Olivia Rodrigo song, you know, it's the driver's license song in the background, I think, I don't know, but it was one of her songs. Um, so it's a catchy, you know, it's like all the elements were working together in that video for it to be a good video. And they did play that one a lot. And so like that, is obviously stopped at this moment. Um, and I can't do lives. So let's say I get my account back and I have to start over. Um, I will not have the following. And I think that that helps me get as many people watching me on lives. Maybe not. I don't know for sure. But I, you know, it definitely my credibility is gone. Because the 124,000 that were following me, obviously let people know that I am the truth and what I'm telling you is the truth or I wouldn't have all these people following me, right? And you can follow this woman because clearly she knows what she's talking about. So my credibility is shot if that number's not there and I have to start over unless I can get, you know, people, I mean, I had people writing to me right away saying, what happened? What happened? Like, I can't find your account. Like, I'm freaking out. We need to go. Can you give me like 
No. It's you said three fifty five. It's three forty six. I know, but you're gonna be. You're gonna Can you just? Get, it will literally. I have to put my flip flops on and get in the car. I will be down there. It'll take me thirty seconds to get in the car. Um, well, I'm, I'm going to stop it and then I'm going to come back and keep recording, but I'm just want to finish up the story about TikTok, which I still have not been, um, I still don't have my account back. So hopefully when I get back, um, and do another Instagram, not Instagram, uh, um, I was going to say a Tinder story. Hello, where am I? Um, when I do another podcast, it will be corrected, but you know, I've, I've been, um, my account has had, a. it's been saying a, at the top, but I know a lot of people are getting this also. I got in trouble for posting something. I don't remember what it was. It was, and it wasn't anything bad. Oh, it was when I, Owen. Oh, it was when I was showing my tattoo. I got like a nudity thing. I remember I talked about it on here. I talked about it on here, but I had, it says account warning at the top. So that's been there since like June. And so, um, I keep waiting for that to get cleared up. And it's like, why is that still there? Like two months it's been sitting there. And they also approved that video after I peeled it. And then I got the account warning. Like what? That didn't make any sense. So they're not on top of correcting things when something happens to a creator and you're trying to fix it. They're very slow about fixing it. If, you know, if they want to fix it at all, they might not, they don't care. They can give a shit. So um, I know this happened to Levi. Um, I think he goes by I am Levi. Um, and he's also HIV positive. He had done like a live when he was around a bunch of guys in a cabin and they were like in the hot tub and they, they banned him because of nudity. Although there was no nudity, they just were in the hot tub. It was shirts off or whatever. So he was freaking out because all of his stuff looked like it was gone too. And then the next day it just reappeared. Well, mine hasn't. And it's been, it's getting close to being 24 hours and I've obviously written to them and nothing's happened. So I am a little, um, concerned that it's not going to come back and that will really, it will change my advocacy in some ways, you know, I'm, it's going to like be a real big downer. I don't really know how to fix this, honestly. Okay. I have to go take my son to practice. When I come back, I'm going to talk to you about um, the Backstreet Boys. You won't even know this because when I come back on, it's going to be like a second later and you won't even know that I've gone. And I want to talk about Cabin Nuva requirements because I, um, I haven't really talked about that before. I found this in a, a booklet. Um, I think it was from a booklet on, or maybe it was online. Um, but there are requirements to getting the Cabin Nuva injection. And I, I don't think I've ever discussed that before. So I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. I told you it would be a second for you. It was 45 minutes for me, but um, I'm back. Okay, let's talk about Cabinuva first. Um, for those that don't know, Cabinuva is the every other month injectable for HIV medication. Keeps you undetectable two months at a time. And it's um, two different drugs, um, one drug in each injection, one injection in each side of your ass. And uh, again, I am just talked to my doctor um, on Friday and I'm not doing it only because my pill doesn't bother me. I don't have side effects. I don't mind taking a pill every day. I don't forget to take it. Psychologically doesn't affect me and um, I'm not having any trouble with it in any way. So there's no reason for me to do Cabinuva. I didn't want to have to drive to the doctor more often and all that stuff. So this is um, from Couture uh, in Clinic, C-O-U-T-U-R-E-I-N Clinic. And I follow her um, she's on Instagram. She's a doctor and she deals with, uh, I don't know if she's an OBGYN, but she puts a lot of stuff out about STIs and I really like her, but this was a post that she put up about Cabinuva and I didn't realize that these were, um, the requirements. So it says it's indicated for, or indicated for the following patients living with HIV. Currently they need to have an undetectable viral load already. Um, they have never failed on any HIV antigen sorry, regimen. That was the wrong word. Um, I, I'm trying to read here in the dark and my, I just can't, I didn't see that word right. Um, and they have no suspected resistance to either component of the two drugs that are administered. So those are the requirements for Cabinuva. And I'm just seeing if there's any, she kind of has like a whole thing written here, but I don't want to see if there's anything that is said here that I didn't already say. It's a first ever long-term injectable medication for the treatment of HIV. Cabinuva is the brand name for the two drug regimen consisting of uh, cabotegravir, cabot cabotegravir, cabotegravir. Oh my God, I said it. And integrase inhibitor and rilpiv 
irene i can't that's the nnrti they all they both basically stopped the replication of the virus so um and as i always tell everybody the virus is locked in my cd4 cells because of my my medication it's like pac-man sitting around my cd4 cells won't let it out it just sits in there and it's just sleeping it's not my free-flowing blood that's why i'm undetectable that's why i can't transmit hiv but you know about me talking about women and transmitting anyways um but that is why people with hiv can't transmit is because the virus isn't in their free-flowing blood and the only reason we test as um that we don't test negative. Well, we really like, we do test negative for the RNA test when we're undetectable. We look like anybody else who doesn't have HIV. That's the results are the exact same. It says not detected. That's what it says for somebody who doesn't have HIV also. But of course the labs cannot get inside of the cell to see that there's actually virus in there. That, so that's the only reason we're still positive. Um, if there was a way to get inside the cells and kill the virus there or stop it, that would be the end of HIV in my body. But of course, if I stopped my treatment, I would, it would come out of my cells and it would replicate again. Oh, Joey's sending me messages. <sighs> I'm going to turn my ringer off. She just put an OMG, OMG, BTW. So she's got something big. She's going to tell me here. Um, so yeah, Cabanuva. Okay. So let's move on to the Backstreet Boys. Oh, before that though, yesterday I got lip filler yesterday. I had, I did it in November. And I just felt like it had shrunk down a little bit and I was sort of ready for some more, uh, just my upper lip because I have a, I have a wrinkly upper lip. I've never smoked. It's just genetic and I'll never forget how I first became aware of it. Somebody on TikTok wrote a comment and the, the TikTok had, you know, it was an HIV TikTok and they said, tell me you're a smoker without telling me you're a smoker. And I, I it just was like, what, what are they even talking about? And I think I questioned it. I said, I've never smoked in my life. And they said, well, your lip isn't lying. You definitely look like a smoker. And I was like, oh my God. So I became hyper aware of my upper lip. And it really was like, I couldn't stop looking at it. I like, oh my God, is this what everybody's seen? Oh my God, it's horrible. Like I, it really, really upset me. And then I feel like I kept seeing comments after that, like more comments, I think, because I said something about it. And then like more people were saying, you know, mean comments about my wrinkly upper lip. And I was with Eric at the time and didn't really think, um, I don't know. I wasn't as focused on my face when I was with him. But of course, you know, after that ended, I like did my microblading and I put Botox in and I did the lip filler. So I had done it in November. Um, actually did the first one I did was like in July or August, but it didn't really do much. And I went back and had him put a little bit more and he did it for free, but still I didn't think it was that much. So I had him do more one other time that I, I think it was November. And I was like, okay. And I left there feeling like, oh boy, maybe that was too much because my lip looked kind of fat. And I was like, Jesus, I don't know. I, hope, I don't want to have that duck lip look. And so um, I've waited to get it done. And I just saw him for Botox like two months ago. And he goes, why don't we just wait until the next time you come in for Bot Botox, like wait three months and then we'll do your lip then if you think like it's pretty good now. Because I wasn't totally sure I was ready for it. And he never pushes anything. He's he's really great. Uh, my my, um, the guy who does the Botox for me, Dr. Struck. And so, and he only charges 250 for like literally, I'm going to, I don't know the units. I never understand that, but I think he said a half, if that makes sense to people out there who do this, I really don't know, but $250. And I know that's really inexpensive because there was this other lady. Um, I'm gonna have to shut my window. If the dog, dog doesn't start, stop barking. Hold on. better. All right. So, um, yeah, I went to another lady because she had a Groupon and ironically she was in the building right by him. And I asked him about her this time when I saw him and he said he had never heard of her. I'm like, how do you not know her? She's like another person. I don't know. I think he was just playing that off. But anyways, I was telling him that her prices were outrageous or something. I can't remember. I told him something about her. Maybe that wasn't what it was, but what did I tell him? Oh, she does the Nova threads and he doesn't believe in the Nova threads. He thinks it's not a good procedure. It's where they put this like thread underneath your skin and pull it back. And it kind of like pulls the wrinkles away from your, your face. She does those. He won't do those. He just will do only like facelifts. Um, but he did talk about some CO2 procedure that he's kind of trying to like hype me up on. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, it's like he would charge like almost $7,500 for this. It's neck, face, everything. Not ready for that yet. So anyways, 
the thing with him is he, he, (laughs) you barely get to catch your breath before he's sticking the needle in the next spot. And so I had put on tattoo numbing cream on my upper lip thinking that that, like, I mean, and I mean above the color part of my lip, right? The the mustache part. I put it all there like an hour and a half before. I'm like, I'm going to be so good to go. Oh my God, he sticks the needle in and it, that didn't help at all. That tattoo numbing cream is really for very surface skin where the tattoo needle doesn't go that deep. So it works for tattooing, but not for lip injections. So holy fuck. I think, I don't know. I didn't, I couldn't count, but within five minutes, I think, or even under, he did at least 20 to 25 injections all around my upper lip, a few in my bottom lip in the colored part. (laughs) And then like three or four in my, my upper lip in the colored part. I can't like sticking a needle in your lip is it everything about that feels wrong. It is and you have to hold still and you're thinking, "Oh my god, why am I going through this?" You know, well obviously we know why, but it is super painful. My girlfriend said it's like you're being, oh, what did she say? She said something about being like gang raped or something because it's like you can't even catch your breath you know her comparison was that because she goes to him also but she says yeah he doesn't like he he works really quickly and he's not that gentle but I think he's gentle I just think he works quickly he's just kind of one two he's just going through them you know and then he kind of stands back and looks for like a split second he goes okay more there more there and he goes you're doing great you're doing great just keep breathing you're like I realized like I was completely sweating I had my legs crossed I was in shorts and I was where my legs were attached was all slimy. I was completely sweating. My hands were sweating and I was trying to talk to him, but I was really trying to just breathe because the pain is like, it does not feel good. It doesn't hurt after or anything. It's just in the injections don't feel great. And it's not even the filler going in. I don't really feel that. It's just the poke. The poke hurts. It's not so bad with Botox because it's just a different area, but your lip is really sensitive. It is. It's really my kids were asking, did it feel like if you pop a pimple on your nose, like that kind of pain? I'm like, kind of. I mean, it's like that intense. Yeah. So anyways, I left there and my lip was all kind of fat and the wrinkles were gone. And then I got home and I guess I like saw the wrinkles again, kind of. I was like, what is going on? So it sort of metamorphosized. It didn't look as good when I got home, but now it's a day later and it's kind of plumped up again it's kind of going through this thing. It says, it says it takes like a week to two weeks to get the full results. And when I looked back at my Instagram story last night, I'm like, yeah, I look like I got a fat lip kind of. I mean, it doesn't look, it doesn't look quite right yet. Um, you know, I'll just get used to it or whatever. I don't mind that it's a little fat looking because you know, it's better than the alternative. I just don't like the wrinkly lip. And, um, I also got a little bit of filler in my smile lines. So hopefully those will start to like you know, lesson, I hope. It's not fun getting older. Anyways, so that's done. And I don't know, I'm happy about it. And I'll go back in a month for Botox. Okay. Backstreet Boys, Backstreet's back. All right. Okay. So I went to the Backstreet Boys at the Shoreline Amphitheater, 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 um, in Mountain View, grass seats. I bought tickets, I don't know, over a month ago. And I had four tickets. I had planned on bringing all of my kids, but then Joey couldn't get off work, so she couldn't go. And we tried to get my ex-husband, Chris, to go with us, but I don't know. He kept making up a bunch of excuses, even though he likes them, but I don't think he likes the crowds. I think that was what he was trying to avoid. So we couldn't get him to go. So I had a ticket that just didn't get used, unfortunately. But um, so we get there. It was Owen's first concert, and I didn't even realize this until after the concert that I had taken Joey to her, to the Backstreet Boys also in like 2012, and that was her first concert. So two of my kids can say that their first concert was the Backstreet Boys. And then my niece, who is like 30, she writes to me and says, oh my God, Aunt Jennifer, do you remember you brought me to my first concert? It was the Backstreet Boys. I completely forgot that I had taken my niece to see them in San Jose. Like I, cause my sister said, Oh, you like them. If you don't mind, could you take her? And then there was like a surprise. Her friend was there with their family. It was this boy that she knew and she was mortified and we sat near them and she was telling me, she was, Oh my God, I feel so bad now looking back on it. But I was so like embarrassed that I had to hang out with this kid, Nick. And, um, anyways, he turned out to be gay (laughs) and I kind of thought he was back then too. But anyways, she just said, so there's three kids in my life that I've taken to their first concert and every single one of their first concerts was the Backstreet Boys. So it's very cool. Um, they are, they're phenomenal. What can I say? I mean, it was the, the place was 
packed. I would say there was at least 30,000 people there. Um, the grass area from the last concert I went to, I saw Aria Speedwagon. There was plenty of space all around us. Not for the Backstreet Boys. The grass area was pretty damn packed and um, all the way up to the top. And at night, of course, when everybody put their phone lights on, it was just magical. It was like, wow, there are so many people here right now. And people are going crazy. Of course, these songs represent a time in our life and they represent, I always get emotional. They, they represent like special moments. And to know that like you share that singular feeling about songs, like a particular song with all of these people is a really unreal like bonding it's such an amazing feeling like it makes me want to go to so many more concerts just because of that alone alone it's not necessarily always just seeing the performer and the performance and the songs of course that's a huge part of it but it's this shared experience with all of these people that is and then because I kept saying like to Owen ahead of time I'm like I swear if there's any men there like are dancing to these songs I swear to god I'm gonna be like you are some like weird dude you know whatever oh my god there were so many guys there and they weren't all gay I mean there were couples that were you know having these romantic memories together of these songs and and obviously like when these songs came out I was about 30 so there's plenty of people who were like, you know, teenagers or 20 when these songs came out and they're part of their, you know, that time of their life when they're becoming adults and they're experiencing love for the first time. And oh my God, it's just incredible. Uh, I get all choked up thinking about it. So anyways, um, they, yeah, that part of it just gets to me big time, but I didn't care once I was there who was dancing. It was like, everybody was pro Backstreet Boys. It wasn't stupid to say the Backstreet Boys, even though they're in their 40s. It wasn't stupid to like these songs, even though I'm 51. It wasn't stupid that straight men in the crowd were dancing and singing. It was all accepted, and it was all, like, you know, it's awesome. It's so awesome. Okay, I, I get all, God, I can't, I don't mean to get all emotional, but it just, it just moves me. Music is like that. It's, it's like a religious experience, you know? And so the guys... Uh, I get, they just don't change. It's like, I look at them and I'm like, I know they're older and maybe just cause I've watched them grow through the years, but they all look the same to me. Like, I feel like their bodies are really only Nick is a little bit heavier and I know he struggled with his weight, but the other guys all look exactly the same. Like Brian Terrell, Brian Terrell, Brian Luttrell is built. Oh, I love us. I love the way he is built <laughs> and AJ. I don't know. I have a thing for smaller guys. I don't know what it is, but yeah they're both like in good shape and they're like, I mean, AJ doesn't look any different. He's covered with the tattoos. We've seen him for a long time with the beard and stuff. And I mean, I guess he looks different from the, you know, TRL days. Is that a TRL total request live? Yeah. From MTV. I used to watch them on there all the time when I was a young mom. I'm like drooling over these guys. Like, come on, Joey, let's go watch some, the Backstreet Boys on TRL. Let's pretend we're like outside, you know, Times Square screaming. Um, but they, yeah, they, they are just, they're just great. So they, they do a lot of their iconic dance moves that I'm sure they could just do in their sleep. Um, but Okay, so this is the thing. We know basically that Kevin and Howie are kind of like the backup singers. They're good singers, but they're not the lead singers. It is Nick, AJ, and Brian who are the lead singers. And um, AJ and Nick are, they sound just like the album. Like they don't, they sound exactly. And that's the weird thing is Nick always had this higher range because if he had like, he has that, that whatever it is, I don't know the names of the alto and all that crap, but he, he covers that part of their, their harmony and he's got that high range and he's still, I mean, he's a man now. He started when he was 12. They talked about this on stage. He was 12. AJ was 14. Uh, I don't remember what I think I think Howie was 19 I don't remember Brian was like 18 and uh, Kevin was 21 when they started so um, Nick had this high range obviously because he hadn't even hit puberty but he still is the guy with that voice he's still got that it's not nasally it's but it's a high you know high pitch and it it's it's just classic Nick Carter and he he is flawless he is it's effortless for him to sing AJ2 effortless just they sound just like the recordings but the problem is is that Brian Luttrell unfortunately went through um if you watch the documentary let me look it up because some people might ask um I you know I can't oh I can toggle I'm like, my thing is recording right here, but I, I was going to say, I have, I have it up on my computer. So it was the document, documentary called Show Em What You're Made Of. 
I don't know where you find it now. I'm sure it's like on YouTube or whatever. But he, Latrell, it says, who sang lead on so many hits, including Quit Playing Games With My Heart. That was his big song that he sang it that night. Revealed that he suffers from muscle tension dysphonia. So it's simply put, under stress, he loses his voice. And he says, you know, he came out on this documentary and, you know, he thought his career was over. And he's seen specialists. He works on it all the time. Um, and of his voice, Latrell says, it's a work in progress, as you know, that I can talk to you right now about it. Like it's, it's, he's very, it, it kind of destroyed him, right? This is what he's known for is this voice. So I'm going to play a little bit of Brian Latrell's voice so you can hear, uh, let me see if I can find a clip. I think this one is it. Is this it? Oh no, it's not, but but still you me honey that's no luck his aj oh god he's so sexy Okay, that was the beginning of Brian's voice, and I cut it off. But I have other clips of him singing, and it's... Why am I having a nice His neck. Okay, that is not it. Hold on, here we go. No, this is Shape of My Heart. Another great song. God, Brian Luttrell's so cute here, but everybody's singing over him, so I want to find his solo. I think this is it. Here you go. Oh! So I think you can hear, I think Nick might come in and kind of try to help back up Brian at that point. What I noticed, and this makes me feel so emotional, is that he sticks it out like he's so part of this band that it doesn't matter that he can't sing his solos because everybody loves him. It doesn't, like, it would not be the Backstreet Boys without Brian. And I feel like people were cheering him on and we're all supporting him, like 30,000 people basically saying thank you for not giving up even though you can't sing like you used to. And his bandmates, it's just a family. You know, they'll never ever tell Brian that he can't sing with the band, but he doesn't sound like he used to. And it's heartbreaking. But it's like a human struggle that 30,000 people were cheering him on. And it just, it totally touched me. And I just thought it was beautiful. And it, yeah, it gets to me because this guy could have easily just said, I can't do it. It's embarrassing. And I, this is not what I'm known for. But he puts himself out there night after night after night, not being able to sing like he used to. And he gets through these songs and he's struggling. You can hear it. He's really struggling. And um, I just was like, it didn't matter. It didn't matter because it's Brian fucking Luttrell and he's up there and he he's still like, you know, he's the original. He's an OG. Like he has to be there. So I just think it's an amazing thing that I don't think you'll find anything on the internet with anybody, I hope, making fun of him. Um by the way, I, I recorded two songs right in a row. It was like over five minutes of recording and then my phone pooped out. I actually ran out of, out of space on my iCloud, but I did get both songs in. It was Quit Playing Games With My Heart and um, As Long As You Love Me. Those are on my YouTube channel um, and you can watch both of them right in a row. It's taken from the big screen that was right in front of me, but it's like I filmed it in 4K or whatever that is on my phone and it... um 
it's really clear as far as like the vocals and everything and you could see them perfectly on that big screen you can also see it because you can see below the big screen you can see them down on the stage and there's more screens down there so it's sort of like a tri-level thing that you can see on my video um i know <laughs> i put a bunch of clips on my um both my instagrams my hiv and my regular one and i noticed that um I, my my views on my stories were very small, and I think a lot of people just didn't give a shit <laughs> that I had gone to the Backstreet Boys. But of course, I'm reliving all of it, and I'm you know in my car singing these songs all the time now. I was just telling my friend who went to the concert also. I said, "Geez, it's like these songs get." new life when you see them live and you just you can't you want to relive it and so you play them constantly I'm like now I've got them I'm listening to like these kind of sappy songs while I'm working out at the gym you know I'm usually I'm listening to like ACDC and stuff but right now I'm listening to Backstreet Boys <laughs> and uh and loving it so yeah I was just it was just oh it was really I didn't know that I was going to hear his voice like that. Honestly, I, I knew about this documentary back in 2019 and this concert had been postponed twice because of COVID. And so they were finally back. And I just, I really thought that he would be sound. I thought everything's going to be fixed and he's probably sounds fine now because he's had all this time to like get over this little issue or whatever it is. And maybe he was just hoarse. I don't really know for sure, but more than likely it's this muscle tension dysphonia. And, um, it was kind of like after seeing it on the documentary and feeling so like, oh, shit, like it was a big shock to find out about that because, you know, this is his life. This is his career. And to find out that he's seriously struggling with his with his vocal cords and while he's singing live, um, just you just feel for him so much, like how stressful and scary that must feel to be out there with these guys who want to perform well and your part of it isn't living up to the standard. But I'm sure his bandmates said, Brian, it doesn't matter. You are, this is a family and you're part of this and you're not leaving. And, and he still does it every night. And I cannot imagine how hard that must be for him to have to go out there and do those few songs that are really his songs. Cause he's quit playing games with my heart is his song. And, um, and he does it with a big smile on his face and he's, he just, I don't know. I feel like everybody was supporting him. We were, it's like everybody was hugging him, you know, and I didn't, I really didn't expect for him to sound like that. I thought that he was going to be all fixed, but he's not, and he's still struggling and he's, but he's still giving it all he can. And you got to respect that a hundred percent. Okay. That's all for today. <laughs> I think I've gone over an hour and I got to go wipe my nose. Um, all right, guys. It's, uh, oh my God, it's almost the end of my summer. I have to go back to work on Monday. I am not ready for this, but hopefully next week I will have a couple dates to tell you about. And um, okay, I'm just going to open up the Snapchat really quick. This was from Joshua. I sent him he sent me a picture and like, I can't see his face as well as I want. I really want to screenshot it and zoom in, but they on Snapchat, they freaking tell them when you do that. So I don't want to do that, but, uh, oh, he said picture frames in my, he said he was doing some kind of framing and I said picture frames or like house frames. He says picture frames in my apartment. They're a pain in the ass because I have three that need to be evenly spaced. Can you imagine if he ever heard this podcast? He's like, why are you reading my fucking messages on your podcast? Maybe I shouldn't read this out loud. Honestly, that's, that is kind of creepy of me. I act like nobody can hear this, but, um, of course these guys could eventually find my podcast and hear that they've been talked about. Um, you, okay. He asked, do you prefer Jennifer or Jen or another way to say your name? He's really thoughtful. I hope he's not nerdy. I asked him, I feel like, I feel like guys have been a little bit on the nerdy side and I'm not aware of it until I meet him in person. So I asked him if he was an introvert or extrovert. I thought that's a good way to find out. And he says he's definitely an extrovert, but likes his, you know, recharge time, which is the same as me, but that really doesn't still give the full picture, but it was better than hearing he was an introvert, I guess. So I don't know. We, sh we shall see. I feel like there's a lot of guys on tinder that are just kind of nerdy but they look good in pictures and then i meet them in person i'm like no my god not my type so i will let you guys know but i think this weekend there will be 
there will be some meetups for sure. I like the fact that he just said, I like to keep it simple at first. That means he's gone on dates. That means that he's not like overly excited and like going, well, let's go to dinner and let's do this and let's drive around. Like he just said, just a drink. Like, I'm like, okay, that's good. He's not like, he knows what he's doing. That's kind of a relief. He's had some experience. So yeah, I'll let you guys know how it goes. All right. You guys have a good rest of the week. Enjoy this beautiful sunny weather. If you happen to be in the United States, it is just beautiful right now. All right, guys. See you next time. Thanks for listening. I love you guys. Bye. Thanks for all my listening through all my tears and my snot. Okay. Bye, guys. If you'd like to be notified for any of my upcoming podcasts, be sure to subscribe. If you'd like to help this girl out, then please rate, review, and share my show. Thanks, guys.